the journal welcomes Santana Unruh, who has a really exciting thing going to happen on Monday. Santana, what is it? What are you going to be doing on Monday? I'm going to be auditioning for American Idol again, and um, it's going to be the fourth time. This is your fourth time, and Santana is a well-known local singer. And, and in the pre-interview process here, I said, Santana, I think I've heard you do the national anthem, and all. It, she handles many assignments and from requests all over the region, and now you're going to, where is it, Richmond? Richmond. To audition. What's that process like? Is it, what, 100 people there trying to get oh, on, yeah. or what? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of different people. There's, um, you know, you meet all kinds of different people, and... Um, it's a big process, but it's a big learning process, and you learn a lot of stuff, and it's a good, you know, it's just a good thing to be able to do. A lot of pressure on you, oh, yeah. I, I can imagine. You, you can imagine the whole world is watching these kinds of things with producers and directors. You, In, in addition to trying out for this, there's, there's a long process of learning how to sing. Is it not that many people can just start singing? There's there's training involved, that kind? Yeah. And I think it's true. I heard a story about you. I want you to confirm it. This lady has a, not only a wonderful voice, but I think she started singing at a very early age in the bathtub. Yes. <laughs> so we don't have the journal wishes we had some video of that. Maybe we can. But Santana, that's a pretty early start. What, oh, yeah. You remember what brought that on? You were just that happy? Yeah, I mean, from the time I could talk, pretty much, I just, you know, I would make up my own songs, like just talking, and I always, every time I would take a bath or anything, <laughs> I would be in there just singing to talk my lungs. <laughs> and I always had to have my microphone. I had several microphones. And, and so that shows you're basically pretty happy. Now, are you writing some of your own music, or are you, are you more comfortable performing other things? No, I have wrote a bunch of original songs. I haven't fully finished a song, or you know, because I don't really play a lot of instruments other than piano. So, I mean, you have playing guitar helps a lot when you're writing a song. So. If I could learn to do that, I would write more, but I do have songs wrote, just no music to it yet. And, but you've got a little piano background as well. Yeah, a little bit. That's good. So, you're going to Richmond, there's going to be a couple hundred probably others. If you're successful, uh, since you've tried a number of times, that would impress me if I were to judge, not only your voice, but your determination. What happens after Richmond? Well, if it works out, then obviously we'll continue with that. That would be really good if it worked out. But if it doesn't, then I would probably like to go back to school and study music and teach music. Well, I think uh, along the way, We've seen you at Applebee's, have we not? This is this could be one of these classic stories, folks, where a local girl grows up singing in the bathtub and then sings all over the place at a whole bunch of events and to sustain herself works at a place like Applebee's and so Santana, we've heard a lot of uh, about these kinds of things where people go to Hollywood and they waitress a while. Yeah. I think you did some waitressing mm -hmm. and so now good. Oh, it still do. And it's one of the managers at Applebee's in Covington. And Santana, we are hoping that one day we're going to look up and it's going to be Hollywood or Vegas or London. I hope so. That would be good. Good. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's Friday, May 25th, 2018. This is Journal TV and I'm Jerry Clark. It's time for the news. What will cost taxpayers nearly $2 million and take more than a year to complete? Why, it's the Durant Road Bluff Project that Hammond and Mitchell is about to embark on in Covington. 
Jackson Street residents will only get blocked off for a 90-day period beginning in January of 2019. It's, it's better to have the closure in place while that bluff is being removed. Uh, but it's no more than 90 days and the contractor's going to work really hard to make sure that that, uh, that happens. It's probably the biggest day of the year for Clifton Forge. Heritage Day will be held next Saturday in the downtown area with all sorts of activities going on from food vendors, artisans, music, and more. Maude Atherhold and Andy Bostic joined the journal to talk about it recently. We're expecting probably more than 2,000, maybe 2,500 people to come throughout the day. And we have everything from um, Highland Games. And to, food. To, uh, absolutely food. We have uh, gospel singers. We have Native American dancers. We have a Quilts of Valor. And you have a bunch of artisans as well. Absolutely. And now a word from our sponsor. Retiring from the Jackson River Technical Center after 28 years on the job teaching early childhood development. Nanette Cosgrove loves her students and they've loved her. But what's in her future? Listen. But I have a really busy, fun life and um, I will be working on my farm. Uh, one of my happiest things is to just be on the tractor mowing and putting up hay, doing the fun things that happen on a farm. And even the hard things I still like to do because I'm always learning. Allegheny County School Board member Jacob Wright was full of opinions this week, not the least of which was his view of the upstairs hallway at Allegheny High School. It appears that action will be taken soon on this item to remedy it. Watch. Upstairs hallway in Allegheny High School is in this race. It looks horrible. And I know it's asbestos styles. Oh, boring. We were just actually discussed this uh, about two days ago when the bids came in that if we could take it the, the additional funding we would like to replace that floor and possibly do a couple of bathrooms. So Mr. True would notice he's got a couple of things on this list to get ready to do. And we'll be right back. Let's take a look at some upcoming events. died on Wednesday. Her funeral was held earlier today at the Wallace and Wallace Funeral Home in Ronsford. Michael Ayers, 66 of Natural Bridge Station, died on Wednesday. No services are planned. And Danny McFadden, 80 of Natural Bridge Station, died on Wednesday. A memorial service is scheduled next Wednesday at the Harrison Funeral Home. Let's check out the local weather forecast. On Saturday, it should be mostly cloudy with showers likely, high of 83 and a low of 66. On Sunday, mostly cloudy with showers likely, high of 84 and a low of 68. And on Monday, mostly cloudy with scattered showers, high of 83 and a low of 68 degrees. And that's the way it is on Friday, May 25th, 2018. More stories, photos, videos, and interviews are available 24-7, 365 on AlleghenyJournal.com, YouTube, and on our soaring Facebook page. Thanks very much for watching Journal TV.